What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're going to find out about the Global Access Modifier in Apex. We'll find out what it is, when you should use it, and most importantly, we'll do an example in Apex together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to go over what the global access modifier is in Apex. And we'll find out when you should use it, you know, why it's useful, and we'll take a look at it together in Apex. But before we get into that, if you enjoy this video, make sure to actually like it because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that want to learn this stuff for free too. So you enjoy the video, like it. Now let's get back to learning about the global access modifier. So um, first things first, since this is the first episode where we discuss access modifiers together, we'll figure out what access modifier actually means. So in all of the tutorials that we've done in this series so far, uh, most of them anyway, You've seen me declare things as public or private, like so. When I'm, you know, setting up my class or my variables or my methods. And basically what this means is, or what this public or private means is the level of accessibility that this class or um, variable or method has within my application within my Salesforce instance rather right <clears throat> so yeah the, these are what we talk with that that's what we mean when we talk about access modifiers right and as far as what the global access modifier is global is the access modifier if I just replace this here with global instead of public is the access modifier that gives you uh, you know, essentially allows this class to be shared with the most things um, in your Salesforce org. So let me explain what that means. <laughs> Global is a is a, an access modifier that you will not often see used in Salesforce orgs, and you will not often use it yourself. It is the access modifier that gives, you know, everything else within your Salesforce org the most access into this class. But because of that, it's an access modifier that you want to use very sparingly. And the reason for that is in Salesforce, there is this concept of packages. And, you know, while we're not going to go over packaging and, and, uh, and all that anytime soon, essentially, you have all the custom stuff that you've built in your org personally, like, every, you know, the developers in your org or, or whoever else, uh, administrators, all the things that you've built in your org are in what's called your namespace package. And you might in your org uh, install a manage package, right? And that manage package lives in its own namespace package separate from your org's namespace package. So even though you both live in the same org together, um, you're technically packaged in two different ways. You've got your manage package in, in your regular org code. And if you have no idea what a manage package is, don't worry about it. Eventually we'll get to it. But just for the time being, understand that in your org, the code that you write is in one package and the code that a manage package writes is in another package, but they all live in this org container, right? In your Salesforce org. So you got separate packages in there. This global keyword allows your code to talk between those packages, right? If this global keyword uh, was instead public, then 
those packages wouldn't be able to talk together or talk talk to each other. They wouldn't be able to, you know, package A wouldn't be able to access um, package B's class unless it was declared as global. If it was public or protected or private, wouldn't wouldn't work out, right? Um, but if it's global, you can have you know, cross package communication, I guess, if you will. And I know that that's a very difficult concept to understand, but basically the only time that you're going to use global is when you want code outside of the custom code that you've created for your Salesforce org. So code outside of say all of these classes that I have personally created for my org to have access to my Apex class, right? The only other times that you're going to really do that um, are similar situations when it's maybe not package to package communication, but instead, maybe you want to allow an external system to gain access to your Apex class to do something. Well, in some instances, you want to do that and you'll set up what's called a REST resource in Apex, which again, I realize is far outside what you're comfortable with at this point, most likely. Um, but when you do that, you'll declare your class and the methods and the, the, the variables inside of it, well, some of them anyway, global. And um, that will allow an external system to come into your Salesforce org and access your Apex class. And that is only achievable with the global keyword. So essentially, the only time in which you want to use the global keyword is when you want code outside of your Salesforce code base to access your Apex classes um, and the methods within them. If you have no need for that um, within your specific Apex class or in general in your org, then there is no reason to ever leverage the global keyword. Um, there, uh, in, the, in Visual Force, there are a couple other scenarios where you might use the global keyword to work with the Ajax library uh, that exists for, for Visual Force purposes primarily and a, a couple of classic features. But in general, when you use the global keyword, it's it's only when you want things outside of your, your code base, uh, your, your actual Salesforce code base to have access to um, your code. So if you don't, don't use global. If you do, then consider it. But global is essentially the keyword that gives your class the most access out into the wide world of code. So be very careful with it. Um, I will have notes to the, the Salesforce documentation that explains um, global in a little more detail within, um, you know, in the notes section of this video, <laughs> this section in this video. And um, yeah, you can check it out some more. But hopefully that clears up what global is and when you should use it, you should use it very sparingly. In all likelihood, you will not use it very often at all, but it has its place and you should know that it exists and why it exists. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully that helps you. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Okay.